Okay. Yeah, he's prodigy nerd. Um, of course, right? You're prodigy nerd. Yes. Okay. So we're just gonna get straight into the next gen consoles. So as some of you may know, the uh, next gen consoles are, of course, the Xbox Series X and and uh, the PS Five. Now, these are two consoles which are very kind of at war. Um, they're both trying to rival each other. So, uh, Mikey, what do you think are the main factors that might bring down these consoles when it comes to graphical standpoints? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it depends. Like, because there are some stuff that don't, is not as good. Yeah, <laughs> good, but uh, uh, um, I'm talking about when it comes to the rivalry. What do you think will change? Do you think people will uh, lean towards the PS5 or or the Xbox Series X? Well, the first thing is that it's how much they cost. Because obviously the more expensive one people aren't going to go for it unless they're really devoted. That's true. But, yeah. And it also they're going to go to a design, design, but for graphics nobody knows yet because they're not out. Yeah, um... Personally, me, I'm gonna try to get my hands on the um, Xbox Series S. I doubt it's gonna happen, but judging by what they've released and they've sent it to a select few of people to see what it is, and we haven't even, no one has even touched the PS5 yet. So I, I personally believe that uh, that's gonna set them off. Be it because the Xbox Series X is finished, but they just uh, have to make some, uh, um, like, I'd say, like, uh, uh, adjustments to it. Um, there was a, uh, there was, like, a, uh, a, uh, expose for the PS5 and the Series X, both. Well, the Xbox Series X, Series X kind of thing was bad. I personally didn't like it because they said they uh were gonna show game play, but uh they uh, and ended up showing just trailers. They 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 didn't show what what it actually looked like. Um, I didn't watch the PS Five ex expose because I don't like PS. So yeah. I think one of the poignant points that might knock people off from buying this is solely on the fact that people are stupid. And so, they'll go for the console that sounds better. So, that would be, of course, the Xbox Series X. That's where it would fall. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the PS5, that's a crappy name, the PS5. They should call it, like, the PS Ultra or something like that. And when it comes to graphics, they want it to have higher frame rates and make certain games better than they previously were. So personally, what do you think would be like some of the higher frame games that might not actually work on next gen consoles? Um, uh, some of the games that have very like in-depth uh cutscenes mm -hmm. like use a lot of the graphics like very good graphics it might be very hard for the consoles to take yeah because because when it comes to next gen because the developers have to make a game for the previous gen and for the next gen so i think that's where because every gen has this fall off where the first year, the console runs terribly, so I think that's what's going to end up happening, but on a more drastic standpoint, B, because the PS5 has what been in development since the launch of PS4, and uh, the Xbox Series X started like two years ago, so I think that's where the PS5 might emerge better when it comes to better graphics, better frames but um it's been proven that uh that the xbox series x is more powerful meaning it has more storage and more frames which i highly doubt but still um 
it's got better res, and so I think that's where the PS5 is going to fall, and yeah, it could be deceiving. Mm. And now, we're going to talk about video game sequels. Now, Mikey, what video game sequels or trilogies do uh, you want to see in at the future? Um... I mean, it really depends on, like, the creator. Because some game companies are going to be struggling, especially during this time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't really know. Because all the games I've played, I think, are good on their own. And sometimes the sequels kind of ruin the games. Yeah. So, most of the time, I usually just like to stick to that game and hope they have DLCs. Mm -hmm. But if... They make another game, they're usually very good. Yeah, uh, I personally think that Zelda's gonna make an other game, like, based on the fact that the last game was Breath of the Wild. So, I think... Oh, yeah, they're, they already announced they're working on a, uh, uh, Breath, is, uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, part two. I think it's gonna be very weak because, because Breath of... The because Breath of the Wild, to me, had a very good world, a... World that uh, you uh, could get completely uh, love and uh, attached to. But when it comes to story, it kind of lacked there, you know? Because when it came to Link, he didn't really grow as a character throughout that story. Because he's been uh, um, around for, say, like 20 years or more. So they really have nowhere to improve. I think sides. he's been around for a lot longer than 20 years. Yeah, so I think it's going to be hard making new games, especially in uh, the uh, coming years where uh, Nintendo is pra, is pra, where, where Nintendo is probably going to merge with some really big company and, uh, and uh, games like Smash, Zelda, and uh, all those other old games might fall off, and they'll do terrible. Because Sky, because Sky for him is is uh, now on the Switch. So I think they're gonna mm -hmm. do something where more tr triple triple A games are gonna come back on, say, a Switch or just future consoles for Nintendo. Do, do you think? Uh, Nintendo can make it into 4K. Do you think they can do that? Um, I mean, maybe. I and mean, it depends. Like, it depends on the game. Yeah, because... Because some games... Yeah. It, yeah, it can be very hard going to 4K. Uh, because when the Xbox came out, 4K wasn't even a thing. It was 3K and 2K. Yeah. And so when 4K came out, it took them a whole other con because they made the Xbox One S to be kind of compatible with 4K. So you know it's kind of a and uh, the same thing with uh, the the PS4 Pro. They had to make different consoles to to uh, support 4K and uh, HDR. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there might be another console from Nintendo that's more powerful and more like an actual console console with like um discs and things like that? Uh like Are you were breaking up I couldn't hear you. Okay, do you think that there'd be a console where basically like it's an actual like I, I don't know how to put this but uh, if uh, Nintendo made a console where it's more like an Xbox, right? To where, like, there's a controller, like a viable controller and a disc that uh, you put in and uh, it would be way more powerful. What do you think would happen if they decide to do that? Well, I think, well, they kind of already did that with, like, the Wii U because they had, like, the Pro Controller. But if it... Mm, I feel like it kind of be like the Wii U. Yeah. So I feel like it just worked fine. They just have a controller. I personally think that people might lose brand sense because Nintendo is not really known for, for making these powerful, powerful consoles. So I think they might lose supporters because of this brand loss and 
this brand that they've been building up for years and years and years, and they just completely just chuck it out the window. I think they're gonna lose fans because I know for a fact that fi- that uh like sixty percent of fans of uh Nintendo left uh when uh the Wii slash Wii you launched. So I think that's where it's probably gonna fail. And when it comes to next gen, Nintendo could make a a, a very good uh, next gen console, but I doubt it's going to be as powerful than, say, a Xbox or a PS4, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But I think Nintendo could probably try their best when it comes to making very good, because they're good at making games and not they're good at making consoles but like portable consoles like they're kind of bad at making like a sit down because they haven't made a good sit down console since the uh since the nintendo 64 so because now they're making more portable which is stupid because if you want to play like say fortnite (laughs) You can't play it, you know? I mean, you can. It'd just be a lot harder because you're on the move. Yeah, and when it comes Did down... Did I ever tell you about the time that I saw someone walking down my block playing Fortnite and yelling at their Switch? No, oh, I would love to hear this. It was, he was like, come on, team, let's go. Where are you guys going? And he was just walking down the block so casually. Oh, my God. Be- because I thought for I thought it was dead. But now somehow it's emerged because now people are starting to go pro. Because people are bored. Yeah, and it's really no like games that games are being delayed, movies are being delayed. Yeah, because um, I know and movies are being released. They're they have to be digitally bought. Yeah, so I think really it's gonna come down to games are gonna trump when theaters come back. I think more people are, are gonna go to like esports competitions to then of like a movie premiere yeah because now people people can get more induced in say in to gaming into just everything to do with gaming so now it's kind of we're in a position where it's either just keep the games or shut them down because uh, because uh, because either way you're still going to be bored because games have been talking about completely sh- shutting down because i know they're uh, gonna take mine they're uh, gonna shut down minecraft in december of this year i think because because no, microsoft went not really yeah didn't microsoft uh, i looked it up it said that, oh oh he said that that was a myth and i think because i remember they keep looking it up uh hold on i'm gonna look it up right now because I think, like, older games might completely shut down. Like, say, the older CODs, like, the older Assassin's Creed games. Uh, even Sims games might even be taken off the market, not just shut down completely. Because games have been taking off the market. It, it, Steam games have, like, because I know that, like, the older... um. Um, Assassin's Creed games have been completely taken off of Steam, which is sad, you know? Mm. The main thing that kind of annoys me is how, like, people can be so, like, ignorant and saying, like, oh, esports is not a real thing, when it clearly is, like, you can win millions of millions of dollars from, from uh, mashing buttons, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's weird because no one respects it still. And it's annoying that no one respects it because of, like, it's dumb. <laughs> because people are saying it's dumb. It shouldn't even be a thing. But still, you can make a million dollars. There you go. That's the only reason you you need to even okay. think about it being an actual sport. I just looked up uh, what was happening. And it says that Microsoft Community Manager tweeted out on in January on the 2nd. It says, hey, folks, I confirmed that Minecraft servers are not shutting down 2020. It's just a stupid hoax. Feel Thank free God. to pass this along. 
Thank so it's God. not shutting down. Because I would have been... Also, I don't know why would they shut it down, because uh, Minecraft um, Dungeons is coming out soon. Minecraft Dungeons, it looks like a terrible game. I'm sorry, but it looks like uh, like a worse Minecraft story mode, because Minecraft story mode in... It had a good story, but it was really bad. You know, it. I I didn't really didn't mind them. I I only I didn't play them for like the plot. I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, does this go further into Minecraft? Which it really didn't. It was just like. It was just like some... the stupid concept that didn't even make sense. You know, the or like the or plot like the didn't or... make sense, but the game was still fun. Yeah, that's it the was thing. Fun. I feel like that's gonna be the same thing with Minecraft Dungeons. Minecraft that the game Dungeons... is gonna be fun, but the plot's gonna be terrible. Minecraft Dungeons is going to be the worst thing Mojang, Microsoft, or anything has ever put out because they're bad at making other games. Like, like they're bad at making successors to Minecraft. That's what I've noticed. Because Minecraft, they cannot recreate Minecraft. That is something you can never do. Pe people have tried, and they can't do it. It's literally mm -hmm. impossible. So, yeah. it's, what the fuck, <laughs> so basically, uh, um, it's really impossible to make something better than Minecraft, bigger and better, e even on a next-gen console, it's the stupidest thing ever, just keep it the way it is, it's perfectly fine, because Minecraft Dungeons is just you wandering, fuck, just wandering, uh, just wandering around doing mindless stuff, I think it's gonna go, I think that's what it's gonna end up being. Because Minecraft has been giving props for being this huge open world. You can do whatever you want in it, right? But I think in mm -hmm. Minecraft Dungeons, is, especially in Minecraft Story Mode, you couldn't really explore the world. That's a DLC to it, you know? It's stupid. I don't like it, you know? Mm. Because I've well, you know, I I've noticed that you really like like open world games. Like you liked Assassin's Creed. Mm, because open world to me is this thing where you could love the world and, and uh, get so induced inside of a world where you can actually explore without being told to explore it. Because if you're being told to do this one thing in the world, it gets completely boring. So, that's mm -hmm. why I enjoy, like, open-world world games, where a bit, I really like free from games, like GTA and certain things, where there is, like, a story, but, say, you can also do this. Uh, um, Skate? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's the same with, um, um, like, the, uh, the, uh, um, Assassin's Creed games. You, uh... You could climb whatever you want. You could swim. You could kill people. Well, no. You can do whatever you want. And... Kill people. That's why it's fun. Because you can do whatever you want and climb stuff and jump off of really high things and kill people. <laughs> that is why it's fun. I mean, you're not wrong. And... Spy... And Spy... No, man. You can get so induced in to the web stuff. And, th and that's why it's so cool. And then when it comes to Breath of the Wild, it's a big world, but you don't see it all. Yeah, well, also that, it, you also have to unlock it all. That's why a lot of people like Breath of the Wild. Um, because, like, you have the this feeling. Like, especially for the completionists, like, they have to unlock the whole map. That's true, that's true. But there are, like, I've noticed, there are only, like, there are a lot of shrines in the game, don't get me wrong. But, like, in some sections, there are, like, barely any shrines. Like, there would be, like, two or, th like, not two or three, maybe, like, five in one section, and there will be, like, ten in a different one. Yeah. And, and then that's why I don't like unbalanced worlds, too. I don't like where there's this place with, like, this huge amount of missions, people, and NPCs, but then, say, like, another part of the world with, like, one person. Like, mm -hmm. I... I... Get it if it's a burnt down city or, or something, then yeah, of course it would be there. But say if it's a copy and pasted city, then and then there should be the same um, um, amount of missions and people and certain things.
because it because I don't like a, a copy and paste of worlds, and that was the problem with uh with a uh, with the uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey because it it was just the same world but different sizes of mountains, you know. Mm-hmm. And because if you actually knew uh, about ancient Greece, it was more of a depth to the world and not just this piece of paper of crap you know Mm. and and it's confusing that they're comparing it to like good rpg games good good role-playing games and it disgusts me that people think that because the open world is just copy and pasted (laughs) they really didn't put any effort and with Breath of the Wild, it's got a good world, and where it's based off a thing where everything is unbalanced, where basically, as uh, you said, the shrines, and and I personally think unbalancedness is everywhere when it comes to really, 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 really big worlds. Because I don't want this gigantic map of just stuff, of just mindless stuff, just over and over and over. It gets repetitive, you know? Mm-hmm. And when there's no story behind it, it doesn't make sense, you know? And Zelda was good at that when it came to the first couple of games. And then, ah, ah. Ocarina of Time is hands down the best Zelda ever. Do you agree? Um, yes. Ocarina of the Time was Ocarina of the Time. Ocarina of Time was the first Zelda game I ever played and I finished it. I speed the first time I ever played it, I speedrun it for no reason because I felt like it. And I finished it in two days because I'm epic. And uh so then I actually went back and played it and I was like, as I was playing it, I realized some of the flaws in it. But it was a, still a very good game, especially for uh, for Nintendo. You just take that leap from like they basically threw away everything that they knew. Yeah. So like, for Legends all like it was in two day two D for like years, and then uh, and the N sixty four came out. And they're like, okay, I'm just we're just gonna completely refurbish the uh, the whole like Legends of the brand, and they changed it, which was actually a change for the uh, best. Because now basically every Zelda game is um, a 3D, which I think is a good thing because it makes it more like ex- you know, it's more of exploring than just going to a land and seeing stuff. You get to actually explore and see like all the, the features and how much work they put into everything. Yeah. Because what games do that's so annoying to me is they try to remake their best games, even if they lose their artistic in integrity they just want to remake that game because our because our current of time you cannot beat that you physically can't so why do they try it just try to make a balanced story to where it's different but still keeps that lore and then that's why breath of the wild is so repetitive to me that's why no so basically i don't know if you know this but majora's mask came out like like monarch like maybe like a year or something, a, a, like not that a, long ago than or Ocarina of Time, because Ocarina of Time did so well that they were like, let's just make another one, and so they used everything from Ocarina of Time to make a new one. So like, if you look at Ocarina of Time, look at uh, Majora's Mask, a lot of things are the same, and they might have just changed like a few things. That was because uh, Ocarina did so well, and Majora's Mask also did very well because it was basically Ocarina of Time just in a different setting. It was also had a darker tone. Yeah. So. I feel like it reached out to more audience than like. So another feature I think it has is they always have like specific things that are in every game. Like I don't know if you noticed, but in every Legend of Zelda game, there has to be a graveyard. Yes. And I don't get that. Why? But why is that a thing? Well, Nintendo likes to make like I guess like they used to have things that like. Each thing, each game has a specific thing, like in for that instance, um, for Legend of Zelda is graveyards. But another thing about Breath of the Wild is that they have this whole Nintendo has this whole um, timeline, like a, a canon timeline that they made 
and it, I ha I actually have the book, but they have made a book, and and it's basically it's just supposed to tell it's like it is canon because Nintendo made it themselves. No, but so is they, the they, game it, fully canon for that book? Um, I mean, I think they have to do an update. What? Breath of the Wild. I think Breath of the Wild was a. I think it was a good game, and especially how they managed to include so much story into that one game. Like it's they true. made a whole timeline. Like it all started with uh, Skyward Sword, which wasn't a very well received game. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to like say like Breath of the Wild, it's a good game, but at the same time. It's to where you're forced to do this one thing, but just throughout the whole map, you know? Where, to say, in Ocarina of Time, it was so good that they're trying to re redo it, but, but at least they're branching out to more audiences, but that's why they're getting greedy, because of how well those games did, so now they're just gonna try and get the most money they can by uh, not even making sequels by just making dlcs and 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 more people will pay for the dlcs than say a uh, sequel because because something i've personally noticed is that people are scared of sequels. They're very scared of sequels. They're uh, very vigilant. Some, some, some sequels are very bad, mm -hmm. as I said before. Like, um... Oh, I can't remember the name of the game. But it was, like, a very good game. And then they had a sequel, and it stunk. Yeah. And everybody hated it. And it lost a lot of supporters because of that. Uh, and so, they like, they had a hard time coming back from that. But then they made a new game, and it was, like, really good. Uh, I'll put a, a example for you. Uh, I'll go with, like, uh, uh, do you know the game Watch Dogs? Yeah. The first game was very good and very well received, but then they made Watch Dogs 2, the crappiest game I've ever laid hands on. Do you want to know why? It is because it was the same story, it was the same everything, it was the same every little thing, but they didn't care, because uh, since that one game did so well, they just copied and pasted it, and basically it's the same premise, but just a different character. So that's where I'm now very s skeptical and kind of nervous uh, um, um, about good games making s sequels, because the one thing I hate is seeing a really good game company getting hate for one game that 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 uh that uh wasn't that bad i hate seeing that the game company is still good but uh it's just this one game and this is what happened to you uh, th th uh this is what happened to ubisoft when assassin's creed o uh, odyssey came out because two people because like 50 percent of people hated it and like, f f and uh, f fifty percent of it loved it, and mm -hmm. uh, those fifty percent were people who haven't played prior games, and really, and uh, they're gonna talk about games being very good games. But why don't those games win Game of the Year? Why, why didn't Assassin's Creed Odyssey win a Game of the Year? Why, why I. Uh, in this game when it a game of the year because if they see a game that they really like some not all but some are forced to enjoy that game uh even if it's terrible they still love the game because based on the fact that they like this brand so they must like ev everything they do and then that's where it isn't true what it's not true because there are so many games that I, or many game companies that I like. But I'm saying some, some not just, all. I, yeah, I'm not saying all either. I'm just saying that there are some game companies that I like, and they make, like, one game that I really like. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait for the sequel to come out. And then the sequel comes out, but it's bad. But then I play it, and I'm like, well, I still kind of like it because it's from the same game company. But 
you really should not believe that every like everything they make is good because one yeah. game was good. Because you can't just get you can't just make um you can't just base a game company off one game yeah. because they obviously have made more. So you have to look at those games before you decide if you like that game company or not. Uh, because like it's the same exact thing with uh, Epic Games because they made so many games. They they've, they've made Gears of War. They've made virtually every game that some of that that uh that like half of you guys know, you know? Because they're part they're part with almost every game company so so they're kind of a part of almost every game you've played like the like the uh, like the division two um saints the third row hunt down gears of war borderlands red dead like Cyberpunk, they're all a part of that, but people only know them from Fortnite. Yeah. And, I mean, that's because they're most popular for Fortnite. And then that's why it kind of sucks, because the, because this game company is a very good game company. But since they only know one game, they think they've only made this one game. And something I hate it, it is when for it, is when Fortnite brings in a character, and then they think Fortnite made it because people actually thought that Fort Fort Fortnite made John Wick. No, it, it's the dumbest thing ever, and kids think that Fortnite made Avengers Endgame, <laughs> and that's Wait, why Fortnite. Me? Yeah, and then and and then that's why Fort a Fort. And I got so toxic because people are so dumb that they think Fortnite is their lives when it's not. It's like a good game, but it's the community that makes it like toxic. Because like Ninja, he was the first really really toxic streamer. He's a very toxic yeah. person, but since he's good good at the game, no one cares. Since he's good at the game, no one cares, you know? Mm-hmm. And something I hate to see it, uh, is that when stream, stream, streamers or uh, uh, YouTubers play different games and then they lose supporters. I hate seeing that because it happened with Dan T. With Dan TDM. It, it happened to Skyda's Minecraft. It happened to almost everybody. Even... Laser beam, when he stopped playing Madden. And yeah, cause like especially in Dan TDM's case, he was known very well for his Minecraft videos, and he gave a lot of subscribers because when he used to make those, Minecraft was very popular. But once Minecraft stopped being as popular, like a he lot had to of people, make money somehow. Yeah, and especially since Minecraft wasn't getting like it wasn't getting any more popular, and it wasn't really like it was starting to lose followers. Because everyone was, like, starting to drift away from it. So, he had to drift away from it, too. But a lot of people were like, no, we still want to see Minecraft. So, that that's why being, like, especially being, like, a YouTuber is very hard. Because then, like, you can go through these phases where you have a lot of subscribers. Like, you can gain subscribers. You can gain, like, 500 subscribers in, like, like a month or something. And then the next month, you'll gain, like, I don't know, maybe, like, thir not 30, but probably more than that. But you won't gain as much. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, because of these cases, because games go up, uh, like, like, they'll be popular for, like, a month or a year, and then they'll, like, stop being as popular, and people are like, but I still want to keep seeing that video, uh, that, uh, that game, but people are like, well, no, because it's not as popular, and you, you need, like, you want to get more subscribers, but mm -hmm. if you keep doing the same game, you're not going to get subscribers, yeah. so that's why it's very hard for, like, a YouTuber to start moving from game to game. Yeah, like, FaZe, because they were... Not no because now they're known for uh Fortnite, but they but then they lost their heritage of Call of Duty, and then now they don't even know their past, and it sucks because that's when they were the best, Call of Duty. And here's the case with Jack Septi guy, he never stuck to one game, and then that's why he did so well, you know.
uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, af, af, after the shout, shout, shout out. That's why he did so well and kept those subs. Even Felix, he just lost so many subs when he stopped gaming as much as he did. And now people get so because the whole cancel thing is is so toxic. Mm-hmm. I don't think canceling should be a thing. Maybe like you like lose a couple subscribers. Yeah, but, or like but, people get mad at you. But yeah. you shouldn't be canceled. Cancel is a very strong word for what's happening. Yeah, because people can Photoshop and make anything and then say it's true. And then, bam, they just lost their whole career. And, and, uh, the thing with James Charles and, uh, Tati. Yeah, it, yeah, Tati was lying. It, it, it was all untrue. What do you mean? The, uh, uh, the whole th- him being a, a, a predator thing? Yeah, false. The whole him tricking straight boys to being gay? false and now h3 h3 i don't like him because he lied about how he asked for money but then he didn't need any because he just made a dlc with payday and then he made a million dollars from that but but then he's still asking for money and saying he got nothing and then now he has the nerve to expose like jake paul but He's ten times worse than Jake Paul because of how scummy he is, and no one calls him out because of because of how big he is. They're scared of him, and oh, I I Keemstar went after him recently. Mm-hmm. Because H three, and I think because of that uh, old, uh, I think he lost one H three H three lost one of his uh, sponsors. I think yeah. it was Old Spice or something. Yeah, and he cried about it when he's basically a multi millionaire from. All of the... He's friends with the millionaires with benefits. So he could get money from outside sources whenever he wants to. He mm-hmm. doesn't need, like, 14 different sponsors on one day. You know, it's the dumbest thing ever. And he's a big liar. He lies about everything he does. That's how stupid he is. He lied about how much money he... He, he don't... He don't... Made it to charity. Who lies Why? about that? If, because, if you're gonna lie about it, at least like once you say it, donate the uh, right the amount, amount of money. Yeah, because he said he don't made it like uh, like two point five million dollars to COVID when he do donated four thousand. You know. Okay, that's a that's a small. Should have at least if he was gonna say, tw- t- how many did he say? Two point five million. <laughs> okay, if he was gonna say two point five million, he should at least donate like one million. Yeah, he's gonna lie that hard. Because he that's... should he should d- donate the right amount of money. But if he's gonna lie about it, don't donate four or a hundred thousand. You said. Yeah. No, four thousand. Four thousand. You, you can't lie about that like that. Yeah. That's just wrong. Uh, and and if you are gonna lie about it, you're doing it very wrong. What's his network? What is net? I'm gonna search up H three H three network. H three H three network. Okay, net worth. He's worth six million dollars, but still, he's lying about donating two point five million dollars. That's almost half of his net worth. How dumb do you mm-hmm. have to be to do that? How dumb? Because people... It's a simple Google search. To call him out. Because who spends half of their net worth to donate some... No one in a million years would ever spend half of their net worth on a charity. If... If... You do... Fair. That's like really good. But if you're doing it, 
at least have a backup plan and don't lie about it. Yeah. And he makes a lot of money from his podcasts. And it's weird. And it's weird that he lies about how much he earns. And it sucks. (laughs) Of how much he lies about his earnings. Oh. H3H3 lied about he him ha- having depression. What? He, he he lied about that. Why? Because he just wants the clout. That's all he wants. He just wants to have money. And then that's why I stopped listening to H3H3's podcast. Because how old is this guy? He's like 47. He's old. He's 34. He's 34? He's born. Yes. I just looked it up. He's 30. Yeah. He's been 1985. He's an old man. (laughs) Making fun of children for being children. I don't get it. And uh, his real name is Ethan Klein. Yes. He's really got to get his life in order because all he does is just make fun of people who go uh, uh, um, on his podcast. And Does it's, he? Yeah, I, I don't watch H3. Like, some cases. Uh, because he brought on Jake Paul just to make fun of him. He brought on different people to make fun of him. He brought on, like, like half of his guests were on there to make fun of him, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's why I don't watch him, because of how stupid he is. Oh, fun fact. So I, so I was doing uh, research for a, for a video on how there's a bias with girls on Twitch. And uh, I found that Alinity flashed and still didn't get banned. She literally flashed. And she didn't even get shadow banned. Are you talking about when she when when she uh was trying to put the pillow on her yes, thing yes. and everybody clipped it? She didn't get banned. What? And she got she but got banned for like two days and then she, immediately got unbanned. No, she forced to ban herself. She banned herself. Yeah. <laughs> because Twitch wasn't doing anything and everyone was like making a huge deal about it. Be- pro- yes, it is deal. a very big deal because Twitch is being very biased about it. Uh, 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 and it's the same with Pokemon because she's oblivious. She's really oblivious. I'm sorry, but she's oblivious of what she's doing. She's like, oh, pe- people creep on me when when uh she's half naked doing dances. Like, that's kind of a given. And it's like yeah. the same with girls... Like, with, like, one, str- like, like with a pandana for, for a shirt. And then, and then they dance. But then when some, someone says, oh, I'm, I'm attracted to you. They go, you're a creep. Like, no. I mean, you brought that upon yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And some people are really are just oblivious of what people are doing on Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, everything. They're so oblivious. Because they're hot, it doesn't mean they can get away with anything. Because, like, Pokemon, she, she's not stupid. She's pretty smart. <laughs> And her acting like this is just showing why, how there's a bias, you know? And when it comes to it, and uh, it's been proven that Twitch pays females more than males because how much viewers they drawn in from literally being half naked. Some 
Some just sit there and look at the camera half naked. I I don't get how they're even mo I don't get how they're even a Twitch partner. How do they make it's the same thing with a stream streamers who uh said like oh there's a volcano in a uh, loot lake or uh or a uh, or uh, the kraken thing in Fortnite. It never happened, and they're clickbaiting children. They're scamming children. Mm -hmm. And then they're oblivious. It's a very scummy thing to do. And now that's the norm. That's normal now. That's somehow normal. In 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 just in general. And, and it sucks. And it sucks. It, re it really does. Okay, guys. I'm gonna end the podcast here. Uh, Mikey, do you wanna play Fortnite? Uh, sure. Okay, I'll see you guys next Friday. Do you wanna do it every Friday? Sure. Okay. But I'm gonna use the bathroom. Okay, peace out, guys. See you.